Everyone knows Steven Spielberg as one of the most illustrious film directors in history. From Jurassic Park to the lovable E.T. character, Spielberg has created several iconic movies and over a hundred future films in 50 years. His films have become so wildly successful that they have produced over $25 billion in the box office which allowed him to become co-founder and principal partner of DreamWorks Studios, a well-known movie production company. With so much success, how exactly did this journey lead to becoming one of only three film directors today worth more than a billion dollars? In today's video, we're going to talk about Steven Spielberg and how his passion as a film director made him worth over three billion dollars. Early Life Steven Spielberg was born on December 18, 1946 in Cincinnati, Ohio. His mother Leia worked as a pianist and a restaurateur, while his father, Arnold, was an electrical engineer and aid in the development of computers. His family was Orthodox Jewish and as a result, grew up experiencing bullying and anti-Semitism. In 1950, his family moved to New Jersey and then to Phoenix in 1953. It was in Phoenix, Arizona that Steven grew up and started growing a passion for film. While attending school, Steven would show little to no enthusiasm for his studies which led him to score average grades. Steven attended high school for only 3 years in Phoenix until his parents got a divorce. Eventually, his family moved to California during his senior year. Filming and directing at 11 years old. In 1958, he joined the Boy Scouts and received a photography merit badge after making a 9 minute 8mm film titled The Last Gunfight. Steven won another prize at the age of 13 after creating a 40 minute film titled Escape to Nowhere. He went ahead and created 15 more 8mm films after this and at the age of 16 he scripted and directed a sci-fi 140 minute adventure film titled Firelight. The film was made for only $500 and would later inspire the famous Close Encounters movie. These projects inspired him to want to attend college and study to become a film director. He then moved to Los Angeles in 1965 and applied to the University of Southern California's film school. However, he was not admitted. Who would have guessed, the great Steven Spielberg was rejected not once, but twice. Steven then went ahead and enrolled at California State University in Long Beach. While in college, Steven did his internship at the editing department of Universal Studios. During his internship, he was given a chance to create short films. His short movie, Ambin, won several awards and handed him a directing contract with Universal Studios for 7 years, making Steven by far the youngest individual to ever receive an extensive deal with a well-known studio. What made Spielberg stand out? Spielberg was never one of the cool kids, which helped explain his body of work. He may have been a contemporary of Robert Altman, Martin Scorsese, and Brian De Palma, but he was never interested in the European filmmakers they admired. Steven was a nerd. A kid, like his longtime friend and collaborator George Lucas, who never grew up, still wanting to fiddle with transistor radios and the later grown up toys and visual effects, and petrified of women. Fortunately, this led to him starting small and the rest is history. Starting small, but with ambition. Spielberg worked on several low budget and television films for years, with Sugarland Express being his major future film. Unfortunately, this film did not do well at the box office, but it was the first film that marked him as a rising star. Eventually, in the mid-1970s, he received an offer and a chance to direct Jaws, his first major breakthrough. During the production process, the film was close to shutting down following delays and budget overruns. However, after finishing the production process with just a $9 million budget, the film became a hit and grossed over $470 million at the box office. Additionally, the film won three Academy Awards, and at just 29 years old, Spielberg managed to create a household name with this film. Following the success of Jaws, Steven rejected offers given to him to direct King Kong, Jaws 2, and Superman. Instead, he went ahead and collaborated with Richard Dreyfuss and worked on Close Encounters of the Third Kind. As usual, the film was a hit at the box office and was nominated for 6 Oscars as well as the Best Director. In the 1970s, while Star Wars was still in production, George Lucas, the writer and the director of the film, was convinced his work would be a failure. This was also at the same time that Steven was working on Close Encounters. Lucas went ahead and struck a deal with Steven, stating that he would give him 2.5% of Star Wars if he gave him 2.5% of Close Encounters. Well, Star Wars went ahead and became a hit and one of the highest grossing franchises of all time, earning Steven approximately $40 million, yet he had nothing to do with the film. In the 1980s, Steven was up and running, and during this period, he worked on E.T., Raiders of the Lost Ark, and The Color Purple, just to name a few. And in the 1990s, he brought Schindler's List, 
Jurassic Park, Saving Private Ryan, and Indiana Jones. The path to becoming a billionaire. So, how did Spielberg become a billionaire? Really? It is thought that Spielberg's Jurassic Park in 1993 is his highest grossing film, earning over $1 billion from an original budget of $63 million. In a successful negotiation with Universal, Spielberg was entitled to 2% of all Universal Park's ticket revenue as consulting fees, which was later estimated at around $30 million per year. This was his first of many royalty incomes he would go on to produce. He learned from his earlier films that he is worth way more than just a paycheck per project base. Even though his pay as a director was high, he learned passive income is the way forward. In 1994, Spielberg founded the film production company DreamWorks with Jeffrey Katzenberg and David Geffen. Only one third of the company increased his net worth considerably, and in 2005, DreamWorks was sold to Paramount Pictures before making a distribution deal with Disney in 2008. This was a big payday for him and invested wisely. His next company, Amblin Partners, was founded in 2015 as a successor to DreamWorks through which he struck a deal with Universal Pictures, the place where it all started for Spielberg. According to Steven, being a film director can be challenging. In a way, you are focusing on your movie when making a film and have little to no time for your family and friends or even anything else. However, it didn't stop him from enjoying life and living it to the fullest. Lifestyle Spending and Personal Life by now, you might be wondering what Steven Spielberg's lifestyle is, how does he spend his billions, and what are his daily habits. Well, in this section, we'll learn more about his personal life. Steven has been married twice and has a son from his first marriage with Amy Irving, an American actress. Currently, he is married to Kate Capshaw and together they have five kids with two stepchildren. Sounds just like the normal family marriage lifestyle for a billionaire. Besides investing in a big family, Steven purchased a mega yacht measuring 282 feet or 86 meters in 2013. He named this extravagant purchase the Seven Seas and is worth $182 million. However, Steven has put the yacht on sale as well as made it available for charter. In fact, his yacht is among the most expensive charters available on today's market at $1.2 million per month. Currently, Steven has ordered a new mega yacht measuring 300 feet or 91 meters, which goes around for $250 million. If you're interested in this brand new yacht, let us know in the comments below if we should make a video on it. Moving on, Steven resides in New York City in the Piet a Terre. His apartment is located in the San Remo, a luxurious 27th floor co-op building which is located at the corner of West 74th Street and overlooks Central Park West. While Spielberg believes it's important to enjoy the fruits of your labor, it's as equally if not more important to use your influence and riches to improve the world. Charity Donations and Creating Foundations When it comes to his wealth, Steven Spielberg has done so much to aid in improving the world. In fact, Steven is known to ironically avoid publicity for his philanthropy and often donating his wealth anonymously. As a Jew, Steven has been involved in several Jewish causes including the Shoah Foundation. However, he is also known to have an interest in causes that relate to science, art, and animal welfare, which led him to become a co-founder of Starbright, an organization that focuses on improving the lives of sick children through education. Starbright is dedicated to developing projects that will empower sick children to fight the emotional and medical challenges that they are facing. Through the Wonder Kinder Foundation, Stephen has supported several places including the Children's Diabetes Foundation, American Heart Association, Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation, Planned Parenthood of Los Angeles, and the UCLA Foundation for Medical Research. In 1977, Stephen made a grant to Sutter Sinai Medical Center for Pediatric Medicine in West Hollywood. The amount granted was enough for the hospital to even name one of its wings after him. If it's not already clear that Spielberg loves to help the community, he has also donated at least $10 million to the Museum of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science. In addition to that, he made several other donations to the Film Foundation. Wonder Kinder Foundation grantees include Tribeca Film Institute, the Shakespeare Center of Los Angeles, as well as the Friends of the Brentwood Arts Center. And in 2012, he pledged to the Motion Picture and Television Fund Foundation $30 million. Spielberg is also well known for spending his wealth on education. The Wonder Kinder Foundation also grants Brick Brothers Big Sisters of Greater Los Angeles, American Film Institute, Children's Defense Fund, USC School of Cinematic Arts, and Campbell Hall. Like education, Spielberg also has a love for animals and the environment, and as a result, through the Wonder Kinder Foundation, he has supported several places including the Nature Conservancy, Peconic Land Trust Incorporated, and the Angel City Pitbulls. While he's already done a lot, his work does not end here. 
Steven Spielberg has got a lot of grant making left to do. Since he is not getting younger, you can expect him to start picking up his philanthropy work significantly before too long. So there you have it. To become a successful producer like Steven Spielberg, you will need not only courage, but also patience. Yes, patience is the key to success. Steven Spielberg has been through hell and back, and becoming a renowned film producer was never a walk in the park. What do you think of Steven Spielberg's rise to billionaire status? Share with us in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed today's content, check out this related video to see more. Until next time, 